Hello and welcome to another episode of Anygames Talent Talk, a show where I sit down and talk to various people from the anime and video games industry to learn a bit more about them, the projects they've been involved with, and the characters they've brought to life. This episode was recorded live on location at Supernova Sydney 2019, so I do apologise for the background noise. But today's episode features Shannon McCormick, who you might know as Agent Washington out of Red vs. Blue, Professor Ozpin in Ruby, and the Quartermaster from Camp Camp. Uh, we discuss how he got into voice acting, differences between voicing American animations and dubbing anime, how he prepares for a new role, and what some of his favourite roles are. So if you enjoyed the episode, be sure to subscribe because there's plenty more interviews coming out of Supernova 2019 and some really cool stuff on the horizon. So without any further ado, let's jump into the episode. How did you get started as a voice actor and what, what, what was your first role? Uh, because you are also a traditional actor, aren't you? Right, well? yeah, I do. Um, so um, the, my first role uh, as a voice actor specifically was um, I did some minor voices for an old... Uh, no longer exactly around uh, anime dubbing studio called ADB. Yeah, they're now Bangzoon, aren't they? <laughs> they're, uh, no, they're uh, Sen Senpai. Sentai. 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 Sorry. Um, uh, they went through lots of different yeah, kind yeah, of... Yeah. Uh, they restructured. Restructured and became a different company and then were bought and then like bought themselves back and I don't know the whole thing. But... Um, so, but I'm a, a stage actor and I do improv. Yeah. And there was a um, an Austin Satellite Studio of ADV, um, which was based in Houston. There was an Austin Satellite Studio, and the director, the sound mixer, and the translator at that studio were all Austin theater people. So what happened was they would cast all of the Austin local theater folks. Um, as uh, as uh, dub actors, yep. um, and I was friends with. I was in that community, and uh, so I started getting cast. The first big role that I got as a voice actor was uh, uh, Akabane in Get Backers back in like 2002, 2003, yep. um, and then they went bankrupt, or they they started having problems. They closed this Austin studio. All of us. We didn't have work for a long time. We didn't. There was no anime work for a long time uh, in Austin, uh, and it was probably like three or four years. Uh, but I had done some voice acting, so I got called in to to work with Rooster Teeth, uh, and I thought that was just going to be a one-off little small role, and it's turned into twelve years of work with those guys. So, uh, is there any big differences between working with a American-based animation studio compared to working on something that's say like more a traditional dub that uh, bangs them or anything? Well, so the biggest difference is um, the, the biggest difference performance-wise is if it's um, an original American production or original production from wherever. Is it free -like? Yeah, we just come in and they basically the animators are working off of us. Yeah. So we read the script. Um, maybe there's storyboards, but we often aren't seeing those. Um, they've maybe beaded it out in storyboards, but the timing of the performance dictates the timing of the animation. Yeah. Whereas for dubbing, that's already flaps. you got to match the flaps. It's already all of that's already baked in. So um, the performance is a lot more. Uh, technically specific in that you've got to you know hit the emotions right but you're also um watching usually the animation as it's happening you might have the japanese in your ear as you're saying the american you know saying the english lines um so it's a little tricky the dub is a is like a technically a little bit more um uh, tricky to pull off um to make it you know to make it work it is whereas with if you're if you're doing the animation for an original show you can just do what you want. The director will tell you if it's not right or not, but it's like it's all up to you. You know, you get to set the tone. Yep. So, yeah. so, I've spoken to a number of voice actors through the years and stuff, and a lot of them say the most important part of the title is the acting part. So, coming yeah. from a traditional acting background, what are you able to bring to the, the voice acting role, or like what experience has that allowed you to uh, be better at the voice acting side? Of it? Um, you know, it's um, it's two things. One, it's um, you know, it's not just reading the lines. You need to tap into the emotions that the characters are and try to understand what those emotions might be so that you can portray them well. Um, but then I think the other thing that comes, that's helpful coming from a, like a stage acting background, 
how it really, this is true for any actors, is the ability to take direction. So if that's not working, if the thing that I'm trying isn't coming across or it doesn't, that's not what the director wants, the ability to quickly understand what a director is saying. Oh, can you make it, can you make him sound like that but more disappointed? Okay, well, how do I translate that into what I'm doing with my voice? And um, so that, that that's really helpful. Nice. So yeah. one thing I like to ask uh, voice, voice actors that sometimes a bit hard for them, rather than uh, naming your favorite role, do you have a top three favorite roles that you've done in your time as a voice actor? Uh, yeah, so I love doing Quartermaster from Camp Camp because yep. he's ridiculous and um, more than any other character, like when I get in the booth, uh, I'm just in character. And I just, it, it just because it's fun. Um, I just stay in character between takes as I'm talking to people in the booth, just try to crack people up. Yep. So I love doing, I, do, I love doing, it's all, it's going to be the three that I'm most known for. It's, yeah. uh, it's, it's Quartermaster, Washington, and then, and Ozpin I would probably be my top three. No. I'm, now I'm trying to think of like obscure voices that would maybe I could add to that list. I was, well, I was really, I loved that I got cast as the voice of um, Constantine in uh, DC Universe Online, because it almost always happens that uh, British actors are, play American characters, but it's pretty rare for an American actor to get a chance to, to play a character who is iconically English. I don't know how great my accent was, but uh, I got cast in the role, and that was like pretty fun to do. So. At least better than everyone else. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. It's really funny. Um, at the time I was cast, they were. I was told like specifically not to do like to not play him like the Keanu Reeves uh, Constantine. But now it's kind of come back around. Everybody loves Keanu right now. He's like a, he's a beloved icon right now, and. Um, I have a hard time imagining that they would say, no, 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 don't do it like Keanu did. So that movie's probably up for a reassessment at some point. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when approaching a new role, do you uh, tend to come into it with a kind of voice in mind, or do you take direction more from the, uh, the, the, the director and kind of guide the path? That's a great, that's a really great question. I usually have a, I usually have cooked something up that I think is, um, you know, usually when I get an audition, it's you're given a, a character description, maybe some notes of comparison of like, oh, this is like such and such a character that you're familiar with, or or don't do it like Keanu, or whatever. Um, I usually come in with a voice. Uh, if I get the role, I've almost never gotten that that conception all the way through to the final product because the director will have tweaks and spins or, you know, uh, different uh, takes on the character than how I had imagined. Um, and then it's kind of a combination of my original voice and then how it gets shaped by working with the director. So, like, the Quartermaster, I played him a lot um, more of a, like a yokel, uh, like some sort of a hick, in a way that they've, like, Jordan really helped, like, no, no, let's just like take any kind of um, inflection out of his voice and just make him like really deadpan. I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. So, uh, yeah, that was that was uh, that happens a lot. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, wrapping up, uh, where can fans? Uh, is there anything fans can look forward to that you're working on now, and where can they follow your work uh, online? Okay, so follow the best place to check me out online is I'm pretty active on Twitter right now. So it's. Uh, my handle is uh, Sad Ogre, S A D O G R E, um, or if you uh, search Shannon McCormick on Twitter, they can. I'm the first one that shows up. Yep. Um, and then um, you know I've got voice stuff, you know, in the works um, that people know about. I have maybe a, a thing or two that people don't know about, and then. Right now, I'm kind of writing my own stuff, and then who knows when that'll see the light of day. But hopefully someday. Yeah. Awesome, thanks so much for your yeah, time absolutely. and answering my questions. All right. Thanks, Joel. Really I appreciate, appreciate it. Man. Yeah. Thank you. All righty. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Talent Talk. Look forward to next week's episode where I'll be sitting down and talking to another voice actor from the anime industry and picking their brain. If you liked this episode, please consider subscribing on YouTube or on your podcasting platform of choice so you never miss an episode. And feel free to communicate with me on Twitter at anygame underscore AU. That's A-N-I-G-A-M-E underscore A-U. And let me know who you'd love to see on the show. This has been Joel from Anygame, and I'll catch you in the next episode.